Uh, when you were talking about parents, um, I always thought of God as Father, yeah. right? Um, now things happened in my childhood, and until I was 40, I could not talk to anybody about it, yeah. and um, I felt I was a bad girl. Yeah. And uh, everything that happened to me, I thought was God punishing me for yes. being a bad girl. Yeah. Now, I think I've found a God of love since then, yeah. But is that just my um, relationship with God, or is that tied in with my relationship with my parents? Definitely. Definitely. It is. Yeah, so let's say this is you. This is you. Here's your parents, your mum and your dad. In the uh, parenting uh, talk that we did last week, we said that these parents are actually surrogates for God. So, so how they treat you starts defining how you believe about God. You follow me? Every single emotion you feel towards God is going to be an emotion that you actually did feel at some stage towards one of these parents. So in a, in a non-sexual way, all of the emotions you feel towards your mother, you will also project at your heavenly mother, God. All the emotions you feel towards your father, you will also project at your father, God. So if your father was punishing a father who punished you for misdemeanors, you will then believe God's a punishing God. If your father abused you and then told you that you were a naughty girl doing it, then every single emotion you go through with regard to God, you will believe that you're the naughty girl all the time. Do you, do you understand? These are all projections you'll receive. Now, if we look at it sexually, there's even greater damage there because sexually defines your identity <laughs> as this person as well. So so now all of your identity is tied in with the emotions that are tied in between your mother and your father and what was happening between them both. And sexually, you're going to have lots of sexual injuries that are related to those two people and their relationship with each other that you will also project at God. And this is why you can't become at one with God until you've worked through those injuries. So... Would having a stepfather... Not that just adds another person in the mix. Right. Yeah. There's and no having an adoptive, an no, adoptive mother, another person in the mix. Now, it doesn't matter if my father... My father, I did not see after I was three and a half, so that doesn't have any relevance. It's um, your father, who you didn't see before, who was there before three and a half, certainly had an impact on your life. Right. And your stepfather has also had an impact on your life. Both of them have. And how, and how that's affected you emotionally has affected how you view God on the masculine side. This is why many of you feel comfortable when I say God is a mother, but don't feel comfortable when, you say, when I say God's father. And this is why I mix the two terms quite a lot when I'm talking about God being mother or father, is because I'm I, I feeling the emotional injuries that we have and just responding by saying that God is the opposite person you want them to be. Does that make sense? Yeah. So allow yourself to deal with both injuries because if both injuries will be certainly reflected by the injuries you've received from your parents. And by the way, this is not... Remember, you can't blame your parents per se because it's a transgenerational injury being imposed upon each one of those people and then upon yourself. So in the end, it's due to all of these transgenerational injuries that have caused these problems inside of ourselves. The key is for us to identify them, see them, release them, like a child would, in full. The problem is, is when you felt something with your mother, she didn't let you release it. When you felt something with your father, he didn't let you release it, and that's why you still have it. 